Hey, I'm Dirty Dan and welcome back to episode two of our break talk where we're gonna talk about the major components like master cylinders and your drum or disc brake setup. We're gonna discuss the different options, the benefits, pros, cons, and what might work best for you. Let's go ahead and get started. First things first, let's talk about the master cylinder. This is probably one of the most important pieces to your build because this is the first thing that your foot touches. When you push your brake pedal down, this is what it's operating. There's a rod connecting the lever to the cylinder and when you push it, it pushes that cylinder which pulls the fluid from here and pushes it out to your wheels. This is a single bowl master cylinder. This is old style. What they mean by single bowl is there is only one cavity in here. You look at your car at home, it's probably got a divider in the middle. That's a dual bowl. This is a single. Old technology, but compact, easy to use, and works in a bunch of different applications. The downside though, you blow, blow a brake line off, all your fluid's going out. There's no divider. You don't have just your front or just your back. All of it's gone. Hit your brake pedal, goes to the floor, nobody's home. Bad things happen. I've been there, it's kind of scary. But you still use them all the time and they do work. We're going to talk about a different option with this single bowl master cylinder. Another option that goes with a single bowl master cylinder is to actually run two. This works by having a brake pedal that has a splitter bar in the back. So when you hit the pedal, you actually have a flat bar that's pushing both of the rods in the master cylinder. And you can adjust it so it pushes one more than the other. For instance, if you had disc brakes on the front and you want some more pressure or you just want to adjust which one is pulling. Real simple to use. Again, these are compact, and let's say that you didn't have the room to run one wide, you can run them side by side. Next, let's go on to dual bowl master cylinders. So we're gonna dive here underneath this shoe box, show you what I got. As you can see here, you have two bowls. They are separated, so the fluid is contained individually. The great thing about this is you blow a brake line, you're only gonna drop fluid out of the bowl that is losing the fluid. So if your back blows, your front is gonna stay full. All right, now you know the difference between a single and a dual bowl master cylinder, and you see the benefits with a dual on the safety side where it'll help you prevent from losing all of your brakes, which is great. You can accomplish the same goal with two individual single master cylinders as well. If you do run the two, you have to buy the brake pedal that has the spreader bar on it to apply pressure to both rods. So if you're gonna run dual, just go with a dual master cylinder. It's a lot easier setup. If they ask you about the bore diameter, they're actually referring to this diameter in here where the piston rod travels. Just look at the specs that are provided with the OEM manufacturer or with the aftermarket manufacturer to determine which bore size is right for you. If you still don't know, you can usually contact your vendors like Jeg Speedway and Summit and their tech lines are pretty helpful and will help you guide you in the right direction to figure out what you need. Next, we're going to move on to drum and disc brakes. Actually, at the wheel end, we're going to talk about the shoes, the wheel cylinders, the calipers, the rotors, and the benefits to either and what's going to be right for you. We're going to go old school first, and we're going to talk about drum brakes. Let's dive in and take a little bit of a closer look at these things. All right, these are typical drum brakes. This is a front drum brake setup. This is just a couple components. You have your brake shoes, your adjuster, wheel cylinder, plungers, and your hold down springs in a couple different locations. This holds the shoes to the backing plate. You also have a pin at the top that these pivot on. When you apply pressure with the brake, it puts fluid in the wheel cylinder, pushes the plungers out, applies the shoes to the side. Pretty simple. There are a couple downsides to this though. They don't dissipate heat as well, and they don't have as good a stopping power as disc brakes may have. I'm gonna show you a couple things with the drum brakes. One being, if you'll pay attention to the shoe material, there's riveted like these and there's bonded. Bonded shoes don't have these holes where the rivets go through. You'll also notice that the shoe material is shorter on one side than the other. This usually is the front shoe, the shorter pad material. That is what's gonna to go towards the front of the vehicle. These do work pretty well. They're not unsafe. Sometimes if they get too much water in them or if they're not adjusted properly, then you don't have good brakes at that point. Disc brakes, you have a caliper, brake rotor, brake pads, and your hose. Pretty simple, right? 
The fluid comes in the caliper, it squeezes the brake pads and stops your rotor from turning. Nice. You've also got these flutes in here. These flutes help dissipate heat, which are going to reduce the chances of brake fade and help with the life expectancy in your braking pad material. Disc brakes are pretty easy to service. You typically have two pins that come out. You take the caliper off, change your brake pads, push your piston in, put the caliper back on. The best thing is, and the most important thing, you don't have to adjust them. That's great, right? You don't have to go in there and mess with the star gear. You don't have to make sure that they're adjusted properly so it's not darting side to side. You put your pads on, you seat the pads, you drive it, the pads are adjusted. They're good to go. Just make sure that your parts are working correctly, that they're properly greased and maintained, and then there's not much else to it, right? Now let's touch on power boosters. There are two main types you're gonna run into. That's your common vacuum operated power booster like this. Vacuum operated power boosters work off of engine vacuum to help power assist in the braking. It makes a huge difference, not a necessity, but it's a great addition to any hot rod. I'll show you the one I have in my daily driver because I actually don't have a hot rod here right now that has power brakes on it. Let's take a look. And this is your stereotypical vacuum booster. The master cylinder bolts to the booster and when you apply the brakes, there's actually a rod that travels through here and then in turn pushes the master cylinder. Take a look over here. You can see this is your vacuum supply. Typically there's a check valve in place. This one is back here and this allows it to only travel one way. The other option with power boosters is hydro boost. Hydro boost uses hydraulic fluid driven off of a pump like a power steering pump in some vehicles to help with the power assist braking. In a heavy duty application or with a diesel engine, you don't have that engine vacuum to help you with your brakes. So this is another method they use. However, in your average street rod or hot rod, Hydro Boost is really not the best option. Just use engine vacuum. If you have a big diesel truck you built or some kind of cool flatbed or something that doesn't have the engine vacuum, use a Hydro Boost. Chances are you already have power steering on it anyway and you can adapt it to work with your system. That's gonna wrap it up. Now you know the difference between dual and single bowl master cylinders, the benefits of disc brakes versus drum brakes and brake boosters. If you guys have any questions about anything I talked about today, feel free to message me on social media or email me at greasyboycustoms at gmail.com. Until next time, happy hot rodding.